Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My Review Works, and I know that a lot of you guys are enjoying our videos, and there are times where you could really benefit from a service manual or shop manual. Maybe you need to find out wiring schematics or exploded views, those types of things. And we've had a resource on our website for quite a while, and we wanted to just take a moment and kind of share that with you and show you a little bit about how to get to it, how to navigate it, so that you can get your manuals um, and as you're working through our videos, I think the idea was originally I was going to take all this time to do a manual, do a video, and then link the manual to it, and that just became a nightmare. So instead, we have, I don't know, over 400 manuals, I believe, that are available to you. Um, not all of the manuals are there, but there's certainly enough uh, to get you started. And uh, so what we want to do in this video is just kind of go over how to get to them and where they're located and then how to search within the window that you'll find so that you might be able to help get your manual and a little bit of nomenclature on how I labeled all these things. So let's jump in. So with that, let's start by where are these manuals located? So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to www.myrvworks.com. So let's go there now. And when you get to myrvworks.com, you're going to see our, our window there and, um, Along the top, we have tabs, and one of those tabs that you're going to see is called the Resources tab. So this is a resource that we figured, well, gee, let's put it under the, uh, the Resources tab. So under the Resources tab, there's several things we're going to talk about in this video, but one of the things we're going to talk about is the uh, service manuals. Now, overwhelmingly, what I've been trying to collect and share is service manuals or shop manuals. Um, there's a few owner's manuals on there or user's manuals, but you usually get those or usually easy enough to find those. Where I get these manuals from is when I go to training, I might go talk to the trainer and ask them if it's okay if I get a copy of, of other software manuals that they might have on their disc. And overwhelmingly, I've, I don't think I've ever been turned down. So if you go to these trainings, that's something you could ask, well, hey, can I get a copy of that also? I mean, they're there to train you. And so I have all the videos or all the manuals that we've uploaded, as far as I am aware, I really am careful, they're all available in the public domain. None of this is proprietary to anybody. I do have some proprietary manuals that the trainer or whatever said, look, don't share this, but you could use it yourself. So those were something I would never put on the website. But um, so that's where they are, myrvyworks.com. You're going to go to the resources tab, and then when you get to the resources tab, we have several resources to play with, but you're going to find the one that says service manuals. Once you get to that page, you're going to say search the manual. Okay, now let me show you. Okay, so on the category, if you know the category you're going to play with, like let's say air conditioners, or here we have awnings, axles, brakes. So I've, I've, we've broken them up into different categories. And then if you know your manufacturer, you can go that way too. So this is just a plugin that we put on our website. There are other plugins, but this one's working with us a little bit. Um, it, it seems to work really well. But where we like to go is just under search. So let's say that you're working on, let's say you just watched one of our videos and you're working on a, I don't know, suburban furnace. So let's see how we would use this. Maybe you need a part for your suburban furnace. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just, we're going to just walk through the front door. Then we're going to show you some shortcuts and some, some best practices for this. So let's go into the category and we're going to select furnace. Okay, so we know we've got a furnace. And then the next thing we know it's going to be a suburban. Okay, so here's Atwood, Dometic, and Suburban. We had Mr. Heater in there as well. So now let's go down to, oh, let's see. Look at there. I got one that's called a parts manual. Uh, for the P, let's see here. Where's, here's a parts manual. So I have an NT furnace, which is pretty common. So let's pick that one and we're going to open up that. And once that opens up, we will see, um, we can scroll to the top, but we're going to see an exploded view. Okay. And so I like these exploded views for several reasons. The first thing is it kind of shows me how pieces are put together. Um, but then look at that. I also have point outs. So they've taken that furnace and they've kind of blown it up. And then we call this an exploded view. And so I really enjoy these exploded views to find out part numbers. And, it, and so you'll find you need part number. I don't know. I'm looking at 18 right there. So let's see what part number 18 is. It looks like it's a gasket of some type, but let's get the part number for that. And so we're going to cruise on down until we find 18. And there's 18, it's a gasket burner, and there's your part number. And so maybe the part number is still accurate, or maybe it's changed. But if you put that part number into a search engine, you might find a vendor that says, well, here's the part number, but now it's now this part number. But so this is a great place to start your search to find your part numbers. Um, 
So there's another way we could use this resource. And let's say that you've watched our video and you're trying to troubleshoot some refrigerator performance issues. It's just not getting cold. And uh, overwhelmingly, that is gonna be a condition of ventilation of the backside. So you want to, let's say you have a Norcold 1200 series, which is either a 1200, a 1210, 1211, one of those. Let's say you have a, a Norcold 1200 series and you wanna know the proper, um, uh, what is the specification for the chimney up the backside? So you would come here and you would say, okay, my refrigerator is going to be a Norcold. Or, well, you would, you would select it's going to be a refrigerator under ours, and then you would select Norcold. Now, I want to mention one thing. If you jump into here, you might see some X's in these part numbers. So I just saw an X um, down here. There's an X right there, an X right there. What's with those X's? The X's are not in the part number, but I had to figure out a way if one manual were to cover several series, uh, then I just put an X. And I started to use small lowercase X's, you know, but then you might find a bigger X. So my thought then as I started working on the naming these manuals was if it's a big X, then that's in the part number. If it's a small X, then that's a variable. So let's just say that we have a Norcold 1200 series. So let's just type in 12, uh, you know, 12, whatever, because we know that that's a series that it is. And um, we're going to, let, let's just pick the top one right there. And in that service manual, that goes back to what I was saying about service manuals versus operator's manuals, because we're here to service things, okay? Our whole channel is about how to fix stuff. And so we're going to, there on page 22, we have the roof exhaust venting. And so if we take a look at this and just, take a moment and study that. Looky there, it's got different dimensions, where the fans are located. Um, there's, I think my drawing, I did a video with a drawing, I think my drawing was prettier, but anyway, we'll go with their drawing. Um, but where did they get the drawing from? From here. And so um, that would be where you would use a service manual to find this information on where does the exhaust fan go. And so I'm a big fan of going to what the engineers got paid to design and, um, so you've got some folks that are doing a lot of weird things to their units and maybe they work, maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't know. Personally, me, I come from a, a, a discipline of engineering. These engineers overwhelmingly got paid to figure out all this stuff. And so let's go with what the engineer does. So before you start modifying all this stuff, let's make sure it's at least a spec. <laughs> okay. And love you guys. I love your creativity, but let's get everything to spec first and see how it works. And then if it doesn't work, then we can start playing around with it. Um, so those are some of the ways that we can use that. Now, another way is let's just say that, uh, that you saw that search bar over in the, um, the window. So in the search bar, let's reset our view here. And um, okay, so we'll reset all that. Now in the search bar, let's, okay, so the search bar has got everything. Okay, everything, everything, everything. Now this time, let's type in, I don't know, BAL. Okay, and here we have our service manual for the, um, so let's say I have a BAL system, which is a cable slide system. And how did I get there? I just typed in BAL. You'll notice that the category and the manufacturer are still saying category and manufacturer. And so if we need to, let's click on the second one here. And um, let's say this is gonna open up a grid. I'm in this one frequently. That's why I knew to find it. And let's say I've got to figure out what motor I need, what gearbox I need, and all that kind of stuff. This sheet tells you all those part numbers. And all I did was I went to our um, resource tab and typed in BAL in the um, window there, and in the search window, and it brought me right here. So if you're working on the BAL system, you've got the same thing for Schwintech or Inwall, Lippert. So now um, there is... The next thing is, can you download these things? And most certainly you can because they're just PDFs. So once you click to open, you can save it. Um, you click your little save button and you can save it onto your hard drive. So all 400 and some odd manuals that I have, you can now have them as well. I've actually got a lot more manuals that I have uploaded. And it's just a matter of working with our, our webmaster to get them uploaded. Um, so I probably got closer to 600 maybe. But uh, let's work with what I got right now, and as we get time, and as my webmaster gets time, we'll upload those manuals as well. Um, now, let's say, here's bonus round, ding, ding, ding. Let's say that you are watching our video and you're an RV technician, or you are learning to become an RV technician, or you're in school to become an RV technician, then I want you to type the word training into that search bar. 
okay? And so a lot of the schools I go to, I might ask for copies of their PowerPoint presentation. So we're gonna go back over to our, um, our window here, but this time in the search, let's type training. Okay, and looky there, how many do I have there on, there's 11 service manuals that are specifically for training. Now for refrigerators, since we've talked a little bit about refrigerators, one of the ones that I really, really, really like is that Dometic refrigerator training. That started off as a PDF. I had permission to, to upload this. I actually reached out to them and they said, not a problem. Um, so it's basically 112. It's, this started off as a PowerPoint presentation. I saved it as a PDF. But if we cruise through that, Oh my gosh, dude, that is phenomenal training. A lot of you have asked me for how do you diagnose an upper eyebrow board? And when I do that video on how to diagnose an upper eyebrow board, guess where I'm gonna get the information from? From this slide right here. Um, and so this is great. And I want you to know what we, what we did was we went to training and we typed on the Dometic refrigerator training. This video, or not this video, this, um, uh, manual, if you will, or the training thing is phenomenal. Some of the best training I've been to, it was three days, cost a couple hundred dollars because they had the carcasses of things in front of it. But um, so that would be good. Here's the Ohm's Law. We have the uh, trailer uh, connector standards. There's all kinds of things that are training. So go ahead and type in training for um, your search. And then, so yeah, if you're, if you're wanting to learn more about how to be a tech and everything, there's some resources we have for you right there. So um, don't be shy, jump in and learn stuff. So I'm a big fan of manuals. I enjoy learning how things work and um, behind the scenes type stuff. And so I really get a lot out of reading manuals. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Um, okay, so let's say that you are going to be checking out an RV that you wanna buy. Let's say that you're a technician and you need to do a pre-delivery inspection or you're inspecting an RV. So let's type something else into that search bar. Let's type in PDI. Um, how do you spell that? PDI. And so here we have the RV inspection checklist, so we can open up that, or the used motorhome checklist. So either one of those we can open up. Now, as I'm looking at this, I see that it says PID instead of PDI. So there's a, a little reference to my dyslexic brain. Um, so PDI, which that says PID. PDI stands for pre-delivery inspection. PID stands for proportional integral derivative for those... Um, uh, automation engineers. So PID is really exciting, but we're not gonna get into the PID algorithm right here. But if you wanna get into the PID algorithm, I've done a lot with it. It's very exciting, very fun, but we're not gonna do that. So that needs to say PDI. So what happens if we type in PDI into the search window? Does it come up, PDI? Oh, fascinating. Okay, so guess, guess what? By us putting this whole video together, we realize that we have a typo. So we're gonna to try to get that fixed, but Depending on when you watch this video, it's either gonna say PID or PDI. So if you're a process controls engineer, PID. If you're an RV tech, you get the point. That's a bug. So anyway, um, something didn't quite look right there. So anyway, if we click on one of those, you're gonna get a wonderful array of check boxes on things to check. And um, so we've got this PDI sheet here. We can scroll down. Looks like it's 11 pages long. And um, so these are the things, on a side note, guys, when I worked at a dealership, this was one of the things that I did as a PID technician. And the things are quite long. And um, I could knock this, now you get um, a flat rate time to do these things. But um, I could, if, if you do those every single day, you learn shortcuts and tricks. And um, I could knock those things out in a couple hours. I mean, you get a flat rate of, I think, five hours to do it. And I think I was doing like three hours, still checking every single thing but you can multitask on those things. I'm not a multitasker, but if you do those all the time, you could do like two or three RVs at the same time while this one's doing this one, you can go work on this one. So uh, if you work at a dealership where they're doing a high volume turnover, you could probably do three P, uh, is it PID or PID? At the same time. And um, those are some of the ways that you could use that search engine that, uh, uh, that we have on our website for your, um, for your manuals and things like that. And just keep checking back every couple months to see if we've added more stuff to it because we just need to work with scheduling with our web manager to get those uploaded onto our site. Now, another thing we have for you, this is something that I put together for you guys a couple years back, going to the same MyRVWorks.com website. So let's go to our MyRVWorks website right now, MyRVWorks.com, and this time let's go back to the resources tab, which is right where we just were, but this time we're gonna go to the annual service worksheets. So we're gonna click on that, and um, 
Now, this is something that I put together for myself that I decided to make available to you guys. Now, the idea here is that every year you're supposed to have these systems checked. There's supposed to be more, and I had a desire to make more of these sheets, and maybe one day I will. Um, if you guys use these sheets and you like these sheets, then yes, I, I don't mind finding time in my... What is it, how does the saying go? So little to do, so much time. <laughs> but um, So it does take me time to create these things, but let's just jump into the refrigerator one and I'll just show you how these things work. So I tried my best to make it a one page sheet. So this is something that you, the RV DIYer, would do. Oh, that's got our old logo on it. Uh, now we put a, uh, I might need to update, update that one too. So this is good, I haven't been in it in a while. So that was our logo about two logos ago. We've been through like five logos. So that one's got the gear. And I stopped with the gear because people were asking me if I do like mechanic, if I was a mechanic. And I'm like, no, I'm not a mechanic. A mechanic's a mechanic. I'm an RV technician. Well, what's the difference? Oh, I had to explain it. So we put the RV logo where the gear was and it just made magical work. So this was something that I wanted to print out that I then could be called into a site and I can, what is the date on that? what's uh 2018 so yeah this one's been up for a while i've been busy um so my my thought here was you're going to call my you're going to call me to come and do a a um a, an annual inspection on your appliances so i wanted this sheet and when i was done i would have this filled out and i would hand it to the customer and i charged a flat rate to do all the things on this task and so that's something you guys can print out um i see now i need to update my um logo and then uh, so so you could scroll through there and see how that works we've got the date and, and these are the things that I would want you to check uh, and so this is just generic if you're working specifically on Norcold or Dometic refrigerators then you can um, kind of take this and modify and make your own sheet um, but you could go with this and a lot of it was pass fail or if it was voltages I would want to write these things down and uh, I mean it takes some time to create these things because I'm digging in manuals because I like them so much and so this is my attempt to make my own manual. Um, but uh, I wanted it to be a short, simple, sweet, one pager. I think my water heater one is barely at two pages. Um, let's go look at the water heater one next. So here we're gonna have a look at our water heater one as it's loading. And I think this one's, yeah, this one's two pages. I just couldn't figure out <laughs> how to get I couldn't figure out what to eliminate and I couldn't figure out, I could make the font smaller or I could go with European style paper. But um, yeah, I, I really wanted to have all of the information on here on here and it turned out to be two pages long. But um, this was stuff that I would want to do every single year when you're doing your water heater annual service. And um, so I was, again, I was trying to make them generic. And, uh, but yeah, this one does spread into the second page. Um, and um, like I said, I went through this several times to try to figure out ways to make it shorter so I can get those last two lines on one page, but I just, uh, everything's needed. And so then we can have a look at the furnace one real quick. So as a furnace one's loading up now, um, you'll see now this one's all on one page. And uh, so these are the things I'm gonna want you to check when you're doing your annual service on your furnace. So the question is, well, what are you supposed to check every year on these appliances? Well, here's three of them right here. Uh, another one that I would like to do is one on air conditioners. Um, I could probably do one on awnings, one on steps, one on propane, um, one on water pressure. Um, you know, there's there's different um, there's different manuals that I could or, or like cheat sheets or annual inspection sheets because every year you really should go through your RV and check all these systems off. And so for me, you could go in the manual or you can just do like I did and make a little cheat sheet. So uh, expect some more of those. I don't know. I mean, I'm kind of busy, but uh, if you guys beg me, I love you guys and I'll do this for you guys if you promise you're going to use them. But um, have fun with the three that I made. I love when you guys give me feedback on the ones that I create because then I know the guy that made them. That's me. <laughs> and I can uh, tweak it. And um, also, if you find any bugs like that PID, PDI, let me know that too. And, um, and so these are some notes that I'm going to take back to my web manager and see if we can get those fixed. So, well, there you go, guys. I hope this helps. It is a resource we have available for you on our website. It doesn't cost you anything. And feel free to download all this kind of stuff. Give us some feedback. Let us know how it works with you. Um, also, if you have some manuals that you have available that you wouldn't mind sharing, 
um, send them over to us, info at myreviewworks.com as a PDF or something, and we can throw them up there and just get this community of information um, working for people. We don't charge for this information. It's available to you. We've got a heart to share and a heart to, to sow into you guys to help you do your work better. And um, I'm, a, I'm a manual nerd. I don't know. Maybe I'm weird that way. But uh, I enjoy reading these things because I really am fascinated about how things work and I want to learn more about how they work. And if you're that way too, this is great reading. So if this was helpful, give us a thumb up. We enjoy you guys watching our content and hopefully this is one more way that we can get that information to you as you're working on your RVs and enjoying our videos. So uh, this is Darren signing off until the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.